So first of all, um, thank you again for being here. And today we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart and something that I think we sometimes don't talk about enough. And that is really about how learning and training and especially right now, all the virtual training that we're doing is really a, a really important part of delivering a great customer experience. And in today's world, with so many of us working from home, with virtual being kind of the, the way to go, uh, we are experiencing this in a different way. And so I wanted to offer some ways that I think we can do this in a, in a really powerful way to engage our employees so that the end result is really that great customer experience that we're all trying to achieve. So first of all, hi, everybody. I'm Jeannie. I'm Jeannie Walters, and I have a company called Experience Investigators. I've been doing customer experience work of some sort, either consulting, training, speaking, writing, um, all sorts of things for about 20 years now. And you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I know David mentioned the hashtag. Please feel free to tweet me there. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect. Just you know, let me know you were in this webinar, and I'm happy to connect. And then uh, you can also schedule with me if you'd like uh, 15 minutes. Uh, it's, my schedule is a little challenging sometimes, but you know, let me know if you want to do that. And then you can also participate in our 21-day challenge. It's a free challenge that we created just to help remind everybody how to think about CX day after day, little tiny tasks and objectives, things to really get you moving and keep that momentum going. And the easiest way to sign up for that, you can text from your phone right now text the word experience to 66866 and you'll get a sign up link there. You can also find that on our site at experienceinvestigators.com. So that's a little bit about me just for those of you who I have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, but uh, we are so thrilled that you're here. And the reason we're here today is because, you know, if your goal is to provide valuable training for staff and you also want to provide those enrichment and professional development opportunities for employees. That's becoming a really important part of employee retention and employee loyalty. So uh, a, a lot of what's been happening these last few weeks that I've seen is that because now we have all of these online resources, we have online courses, we have all these different things, some leaders are just saying, okay, it's a great opportunity to take this time and learn. You know, if you don't have a commute right now, if you don't have some of those things that took time away from going to an office, we might have some more flexibility in our time. So, okay, everybody learn, take this course, take this course. And there were just kind of links being sent out. And I think we're all managing this time in our own way. And we're also experiencing things we didn't necessarily expect. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard the term Zoom zombie, but you know we have so many of these online meetings and online uh, ways to participate that it's, it can feel a little bit like you're just sitting in front of a screen and people are talking at you, which is ironic as I sit here and talk at you on a screen, I realize as I say that. But one of the things that I think is important is to think about if you really want people to learn, if you really want them to internalize what you're trying to get across uh, so that you can deliver on that customer experience. How can you make that a little more engaging? How can you make sure that you're really helping your learners in the best way? And I've had the great privilege of working with some leaders in learning, especially over the last few years. And I turned to them and I said, what do you, what do you want to say here? What can you provide for us? And so the first person I talked to was my friend, Leslie Daly. She is the chief learning officer at Orange Theory Fitness. And I'm going to read these quotes to you. I promise I won't read every single slide to you, but I want to make sure that I get their words right. And so what she said, which I really loved, was learners today need different support and learning modalities than we were providing in the past. We need to consider their physical, emotional, and mental well-being in today's realities. That's why L&D leaders need to provide engagement that meets the learner where they are currently, which will allow them to continue to grow and develop. And the part I want to zero in on there is how she mentions their physical, emotional, and mental well-being in today's realities. I think they're, you know, we've come a long way uh, professionally from uh, being, you know, where everybody had to show up in a suit or a tie and, you know, being very formal. We've come a long way from that professional environment. And so people are, I think, more allowed to bring their whole selves to work than we ever have been in history. 
But there's still this element where sometimes we guard that, right? We, we don't want to let our employer or our team know our vulnerabilities as a person. And I think there's this fine line we all walk between what's too much information, what's, you know, uh, everybody has certain challenges that we have to overcome when we are going to work, when we're trying to get things done. But in today's environment, there is so much around, you know, how are we taking care of ourselves? How are we making sure that we're taking care of one another? And if we're not tapping into that for our learners, then we're missing an opportunity to really support them as well. So I just loved that that's where she came to with us. The next person I asked was uh, Scott Milrad. He's actually a content manager for business skills at LinkedIn Learning. And I'm I've been fortunate enough to teach four courses for uh, LinkedIn Learning, and we'll drop some links in there so you can get 30 days free. Uh, but Scott has been my content manager, and so I've had the privilege of working with him. And he, I thought, brought up a really great point too. And this is the, the part that I, I love about how he approached this was that instead of thinking about this as just this time in history, let's think about this a little longer term. So what Scott said was one idea keeps emerging that this new normal of learning is actually not all that different than what L&D, which are learning and development leaders have been saying for quite some time that companies need to adopt new strategies and top down support for professional and personal development for their employees. If not before, it's most certainly the time we're living in now. And it's really about making sure that leadership throughout your organization really understands how learning fits in to your bigger strategies, your bigger goals, your customer experience. Um, it, it kind of baffles me that we don't connect these things a lot. A lot of times what happens is we have learning over here and we have customer experience over here and the two are kind of not really considered as part of the same team. They have to be in order to get this right. So I love that he's thinking about this in this longer term way. And finally, I, I asked my friend Samantha Lang, who is the content director at SAP Litmus. Litmus is a learning management system, LMS platform. Some of you may have those in your own organizations. They bring in content from all sorts of places and they provide that for learners uh, throughout lots of different organizations. It's a fabulous tool. And what Samantha said was that this is really about the new norm. So let's talk about it. So her quote is, now that remote learning is the new norm, there you go, <laughs> it's essential to leverage the features of an LMS and other technologies to engage learners beyond just assigning training. And that's the key point. It needs to create as much interest and require as much attention as in-person training. Companies who get it right are using personalization, gamification, certification, customized learning paths, and other forms of automation to deliver continuous learning that inspires participation. And there were a couple things I really liked about what she said here too, which is that it has to be as engaging, right, as in person, but here are all the ways that we can do that. And then it has to inspire the learner. It's not just an assignment. It's not something where we're saying, do this or else. It's something where they are, are learning to be learners. They want to participate for their own benefit and they want to really um, engage with their learning at this level. I thought that was a really great point that what an aspirational place to be, right? To inspire your learners this way. So let's talk about what uh, some of the ways that I thought we could really engage people in the best way around learning. So here are the things that we're gonna talk about today. Um, so we'll be talking about, you know, first of all, we need to in explain the why, not just the what. This is especially important with training. We'll, we'll talk about that. Ask for feedback specifically. If you've been on these webinars, if you follow me on my blog, you know I love feedback. <laughs> I love to ask for it from customers, employees, everybody that we can. Learners are no different. And then create course cohorts. And there are different words for this, but really... Right now, we have an opportunity to support one another in learning in really interesting ways. And I think it's important to take advantage of that. And host lunchtime learning uh, and ask learners to guide the discussions. There's power in asking learners to become teachers. And there's power in kind of replicating some of these things that we've done in person in the past, like brown bag lunches. And really, it's a way to connect on, on a couple different levels. And then we want to build momentum around virtual sessions. So instead of just 
hosting a virtual session, we want to make sure that we have different tools, different best practices there to support the learners as well. So let's talk about this one. Uh, explain the why, not just the what. What I want you to think about here is when we're assigning training, when we're telling people that they need to go through this learning path, a couple things happen. One is if we, if we do it in a certain way, it's easy for the learner to get defensive, to feel like, well, why are you telling me to learn about empathy? Is it because I'm not expressing empathy? I'm trying really hard. What's happening? And so we have to couch our assignments here and the tasks that we're asking our learners to do into uh, more about the purpose for the overall organization. So instead of saying something like, uh, please go take this empathy course by Friday, what I want you to think about is how important is that? Where does that fit in to your overall strategy, your overall customer experience, your overall mission as a company? And then explain that so it's a bigger part of the organization. So when you are looking for making these assignments, for requesting that they take these trainings, ask yourself, what will this do for the entire organization? Why is this important? And then explain that. So instead of saying, take this course on empathy, maybe phrase it so that you're saying something like, you know, as you know, empathy is one of our core values here. And right now, we know empathy is critical to our customers. And we want every single person here to be able to really live up to that promise for our, our customers. So we're asking everybody in our contact center to take this training. And then we're going to ask you for feedback. And that last part we're going to go into too, but I think it's really important to let learners know that they are part of this process. It is a joint, uh, it's a joint process. It's a joint a discovery of education. It's not something where you're saying, this is what's happening and taking that dictator approach. You really wanna engage people with why is this important to us? And start there because they have to care. They have to care. Too many of us have taken trainings where we've literally just click, 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 click. Okay, I'm done. And it, we don't internalize any of that because it's not meaningful. We need to make it meaningful from the beginning and that's tying it back to the why. So the other thing is we need to ask our learners for feedback specifically about their learning. And we need to say, okay, what is it that you need in order to engage here? What is it that we can do to support your learning here? How was that learning experience for you? What can we do differently next time? I think it's really important for them to know that they are included in this and that their feedback matters. And so once you get that feedback, you have to create a feedback loop just like any other feedback program. So if your learners are telling you, you know what, that, that training was pretty good, but it was like twice as long as it needed to be. If you're hearing that feedback and then they go back the next year, they're assigned the same training and it's the same exact thing. That's showing them that you're not really listening, that you're not really uh, inviting them to participate earnestly. And so look for ways that you can create that closed loop feedback process just like you would for customers or for employee engagement surveys or any of those things. Really make sure that you're taking that feedback seriously and that you're showing them and letting them know that they're heard and you're taking action around it. Uh, create course cohorts. I, I love this idea because I think many of us, you know, we all have different learning styles. We all have preferences around how we get that information and how we really do internalize it. And some people are perfectly happy on their own taking a course and really, you know, they can do that. They can hold themselves accountable. They can uh, make sure that they're going in the right order and asking for what they need along the way. Some people really aren't great at that and that's okay. I think some of us really want that social interaction. Some of us want to be in that classroom and have those conversations and be challenged and challenge others and ask about the material uh, in real time and all of those things that make classroom learning kind of what it is. So because we might be, you know, learning virtually for a while, instead of just saying to everybody, you know what, go do your thing uh, and let us know when, when it's gonna happen. Uh, think about creating groups of your learners who can go through the process together, who can hold each other accountable, 
who can help break up the work a little bit because sometimes, you know, if you've got five different modules that are an hour each and they all have assignments, you might not want to sit down and do that in a day. And a lot of employees end up doing that because they procrastinated and there's a deadline involved. Creating a cohort allows you to say, okay, every Monday, how about we meet for an hour? We talk about the last lesson. We do our homework assignments. We come back and we hold each other accountable on those. And then we go into the next week and we do the next lesson. It's a really nice way to create kind of that classroom experience. The other thing I like about this is you can actually do this in a cross-functional way for much of what you want your people to learn. So let's take empathy again. If you're creating something where you want them to really understand empathy, you might want every single person in your organization to take this training. Great. Instead of saying, okay, sales team, this is the way you're doing it, maybe create cross-functional teams of people who wouldn't necessarily have access to one another, who would uh, benefit from knowing, you know, what do people in accounting do? I've never had a friend in accounting before. So really trying to figure out what makes the most sense for your organization, but it's a great way to build those social, those social ties that might otherwise be overlooked. Uh, and it's also wonderful around accountability, and it's wonderful to help people really take it seriously and come back to their group and say, this is what I learned, and then hear different ideas from different learners about what they learned too. Host lunchtime learning. This is one of my favorites too, because a lot of organizations have kind of adopted this idea of brown bag lunches where somebody teaches, uh, and it could be something that is really part of professional development. It can be out there, you know. I've seen people share things like, you know, cooking classes. Uh, so that there's one organization I was working with, and one of the newer people on the team had just moved to the United States from Peru. And so one of the things she did was host a Peruvian cooking class over a brown bag lunch so that, you know, she teaches them how to cook this wonderful food. They get to share in this together, but it's also something they learned. So then she had colleagues coming up to her saying, you know, I tried that dish uh, at home. It turned out great. Thank you so much. It's a way, again, to build those, those social ties that are a little more challenging sometimes. So I've seen things like that where people bring a piece of their own personality, their own family, their own heritage, and they share that. I've also seen where people say, you know what, I uh, I'm in marketing and I don't know how to balance my checkbook. I don't know how to, um, what I should be looking for in my bank statement. So the people who are in finance will say, okay, we're going to host a uh, brown bag lunch about how to create a household budget. And it's one of those skills that might come really easily to some people. And it's just a challenge for others. Look for ways to, to really showcase that because uh, one of the things that happens, and this is true for anybody here, I'm sure, if you've ever been asked to teach a topic, you become a better learner about that topic. So if there are places where you really want your teams to, to excel, then that might be a great thing to do is say, okay, we really want to take on, let's say, customer journey mapping. That's a popular topic right now. We want our people to really understand how they can do their own customer journey mapping. Well, okay, uh, Gladys, you're going to teach that class. And then, uh, Sam, you're going to teach the follow-up. So that as you learn this material in order to teach it, you actually learn it in a better way. So there are a couple really great ways that you can leverage this type of idea, both for that social aspect, as well as people bringing their best selves to work. Like if I'm going to teach something I'm passionate about, that's my best self showing up. And then also this idea that by teaching, we actually become better learners. So how can we get people to really learn things that are super important to our organization as well? And the last thing here is to build momentum around virtual sessions. And what I mean by that is we have, you know, a couple different ways of learning now. One are these online courses. You can take them on your own time. You can really uh, just, again, kind of send that link out and say, good luck, but all these other ways that you can interact. And then there are things like this, which are live virtual events. Um, they are you know, real time and I'm, I'm here with you right now. So we are weirdly in person and yet at the same time, it's virtual. And so what I would love to see is instead of kind of taking that idea of 
uh, okay, whatever worked in person, let's just throw it into a virtual event and turning it into something a little different. There are different tools available now where you can provide more interactivity. You can uh, do things like polls in the middle of your teaching and say, okay, let's, let's vote. What do you guys think here? You can do things like surveys before, during, and after. You can uh, ask people just like we do here, you know, submit your questions and let's make sure we address those. So there are all sorts of ways to really build momentum around virtual sessions. And then also they don't have to die right away. You, if you do one session, it doesn't mean you have to be done. You can then say, okay, let's, let's create a, a group in Slack and communicate about what did we learn and what are the next steps and what do you guys want next? So really creating that, that way to keep people engaged beyond the actual event and thinking about your virtual sessions a little differently. People have a different attention span in this environment. We all have different energy levels right now. All of those things we have to be aware of. So instead of, I might do an eight hour workshop in person and yes, it's exhausting, I'll be honest, but uh, we keep the momentum and energy going all day and I can really respond to the people in the room and think, okay, I need to move the break up or, I'm, uh, or everybody's on a roll now, we're gonna move the break back. For virtual sessions, you have to be a little more aware of the fact that you can't control all of that as, as, as well as you can in person. And so really looking to your group and saying, okay, here's my plan. We're going to have X number of breaks where these are the times, this is what we're doing, but I'm going to be checking in with you all day. And those check-ins might be polls. They might be these surveys. They might be simple chat boxes of who wants to take a break and people raise their hand. So really finding ways for you to provide the best kind of virtual session. And then asking learners to interact, really helping them create that peer-to-peer -peer learning that is so important. Uh, with tools like Zoom, you can create these Zoom rooms and send people out to breakout sessions, have them come back and report back to the group so that they're engaged. They're not just sitting there. So there are all sorts of ways around this, but I think that it's important to think about virtual events as distinct from in-person events. You cannot just pick it up and move it to virtual. You have to think about the differences in how learners are going to interact and provide more interaction for them peer to peer. So I, uh, <laughs> I always feel like it's a little bit of a marathon when I get to this place, but uh, I would love to, you know, hear your questions, understand what you're uh, leading in learning, how you guys are doing this, as well as what challenges or questions you have. And I also just want to, again, thank all of these amazing learning leaders for providing their input and their insights for us because uh, they are absolute leaders in their field and we were lucky to get their wisdom. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If so, make sure to subscribe. We do these webinars every Friday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on LinkedIn Live and right here on YouTube. And if you've got a question, don't be shy. Ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. You're here for your customers. I'm here for you.